a, a different venue for it. After 87, when Reagan did away with that wall, and when he did away with the Fairness Doctrine, and said, you can now do infotainment, now routinely you see this. You see, you know, NBC, for example, is owned by Universal. Universal has a blockbuster movie coming out on uh, every show from Joe, uh, Joe Scar to, to Rachel Maddow. You're going to see the, the, the stars of that new movie being interviewed. That's not news. That's infotainment. I, I, I see you call it, uh, showing an analogy there with, or at least you bring Fox News into it and call that information. That's not information. Fox News is news. And people want the truth. So where it boils down to me is the truth versus what the government, what left-wing left propagandists such as yourself want the American people to ingest right. intellectually. So, Billy, if Fox so-called news is the news, is the truth, then why is it that when universities do studies of Fox News viewers, they find that they're more not only less well-informed, but more misinformed than people who don't watch any news at all. Well, I don't trust those studies to begin with, but I'll, I'll, I will tell you this. Fox News doesn't hurt for sponsors, and they don't have to go begging for people to send money to their... No, you're right. They, they, for for, for five like years, they lost $100 million a year of Rupert Murdoch's money, but he's a billionaire. He could, he could put in $500 million, well, and then they finally money. started showing a profit. They've got a very profitable business model. I grant you that, Billy. Uh, but does that make it good? It, the truth is good, Tom. And right. The truth is something for right. And you watch Fox News. Do you think Obama was born in Kenya? Um, I have no clue where Obama was born. Okay. Okay. Oh, I, so, I don't know. Right. Do you think he's a Muslim? But I do. I do hear y'all misrepresenting everything from the war on women to the gay marriage. Yeah. That's really about. Well, uh, Billy, you know, stay with Fox News then. Although I would suggest before you do that that you go to MediaMatters.org and just invest ten minutes in reading the website. And Billy, thanks for the call. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-536-2370. The reason I mention media, mention MediaMatters.org is because they do just a great job literally every day of debunking the lies that you find in Fox News. MediaMatters.org. Tom Hartman here with an excerpt from my book, Rebooting the American Dream, 11 Ways to Rebuild Our Country. So that's the story they have to run with on the news, the intern said, relating the substance of the network correspondent's thoughts, because that's what the American people want to see. If the network doesn't give people what they want to see, viewers will tune away, and the network won't have any viewers, ratings, or revenues. End of quote. The two other interns commiserated with the first about what a shame it was that Americans wanted the titillating stories instead of the substantive ones. But they accepted without question that the network was therefore obligated to give people what they want. When they finished their panel discussion, I asked these college students if they knew that there was a time in America when radio and TV stations and networks broadcast actual news instead of infotainment because the law required them to do so. None of them had any idea what I was talking about. They were mystified. Why would a station or network broadcast pro programs that were not popular or not what the people wanted? But the reality is that from the 1920s, when radio began uh, really starting to go big in the United States, until Reagan rolled it back in 1987, the Federal Communications Law required a certain amount of public service programming from radio and television stations as a condition of retaining their broadcast license. The agreement was basic and simple. In exchange for the media owners being granted a license from the Federal Communications Commission uh, to, to use the airwaves owned by the public, those private corporations had to serve the public interest first, and only then could they go about the business of making money for their owners. If they didn't do so, when, when it came time to renew their license, public groups and individuals could show up at public hearings on the license renewal and argue for the licenses being denied. One small way the stations lived up to their public service mandate was by airing public service announcements for local nonprofit groups, community calendars, and other charitable causes. They also had to abide by something called the Fairness Doctrine, which required them to air diverse viewpoints on controversial issues. Separately, during election campaigns, broadcasters had to abide by the equal time rule, which required them to provide equal airtime to rival candidates 
in an election. But the biggest way they proved they were providing a public service and meeting the requirements of the Fairness Doctrine was by broadcasting the news. Real news. Actual news. Local, national, and international news pro produced by professionals, old school journalists. Because the news didn't draw huge ratings like entertainment shows, although tens of millions of Americans did watch the news every night on TV and listen to it at the top of every hour on radio from coast to coast. And because real news was expensive to produce with bureaus and correspondents all over the world, news was a money loser for all of the big three TV networks and for most local radio and TV stations. But it was such a sacred thing. This was, after all, the keystone that held together the station's license to broadcast and thus to do business. Didn't matter if it lost money, it made all the other money-making things possible. Through much of the early 1970s, I worked in the newsroom of a radio station in Lansing, Michigan. It had been started and was then run by three local guys, an engineer, a salesman, and a radio broadcaster. They split up their responsibilities like you'd expect, and we were all around the building most days and would hang out from time to time with the on-air crew, all except the sales guy. I was forbidden from talking with him because I worked in news. There could be no hint ever anywhere that our radio station had violated the FCC's programming in the public interest mandate by, for example, my going easy on an advertiser in a news story or promoting another advertiser in a different story. News had to be news, separate from profits and revenue. And if it wasn't, I'd be fired on the spot. News, in other words, was not part of the free market. It was part of our nation's intellectual commons, and thus the price of that station's license. After Reagan blew up the Fairness Doctrine in 1987, two very interesting things happened. The first was the rise of right-wing hate speech talk radio, starting with Rush Limbaugh that very year. The second, which really stepped up fast after President Clinton signed the Telecommunications Act of 1996, which further deregulated the broadcast industry, was that the money-losing news divisions of the big three TV networks were taken under the wings of their entertainment divisions and wrung dry. Foreign bureaus were closed, reporters were fired, stories that promoted the wonders of advertisers or other companies like movie production houses owned by the same mega corporations that owned the networks began to appear on the news and investigative journalism that cast a bright light on corporate malfeasance vanished. And because newscasts had ads and those ads were sold based on viewership, the overall arc and content of the news began to be dictated by what the public wanted to know rather than by what they needed to know to function in a democratic society. The interns were aghast. Reagan did that one said, incredulous. I said yes, that Bill Clinton then helped the process along to its current sorry state by signing the Telecommunications Act, leading to the creation of the Fox News Channel in October 1996 and its now legal ability to call itself a news operation while baldly promoting what it knew to be falsehoods or distortions. Now here we are in the current era and the news media is an abject failure when it comes to reporting the real news, news that citizens in a democracy actually need to know. I'm Tom Hartman, and you just heard an excerpt of my book, Rebooting the American Dream. Find out what happens next at TomHartman.com.